Talk about the cat. <laughs> <laughs> Can you? Yeah, okay. You want to come up? Come up this? <laughs> Millie and I had a conversation during the week, and it was uh, funny it, and gross. It was funny and gross the conversation, and the law of attraction was at work in this conversation for both myself and Millie. So, so uh, Millie was feeling a bit blocked, uh, and. And lo and behold, I was cho outside chopping some wood, right? And I'm thinking of Millie, right? And about, I don't know, maybe five minutes later, Millie rings. Yeah. She phones me. So, so I go and, and we sit down and we have a conversation. And one of the things that comes up in this conversation is about her new uh, stray male uh, cat. I live in the bush and this cat come out of the bush. It's a tomcat, real scruffy looking. And it just... Um, I met a new partner at the time and I was not home very much <laughs> and it, um, my other cat was meowing a lot probably and that's what attracted it and it moved into the house while I was away. Um, so it took over so your house? took over the house <laughs> and uh, then when I did come back, in, well I was wondering why the food was going so quickly but anyway that's it, just the rest of the story. And so coming back home to spend more time at home, the cat would get on my lap, it still does it sometimes, and it would knead its feet like that. Yeah. And then it would gaze lovingly. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, go... <laughs> <laughs> and on the cushion there would be a wet pot. <laughs> and it was just really disgusting. <laughs> and I thought I was over a law of attraction. And that showed me that obviously I wasn't. <laughs> so first let's get it. This, this male cat, and it was a male cat, was responding to Millie's unresolved emotion. Right. And, and it has to do with the disgust. The disgust about sexual matters. In particular, men's... men's uh, disgusting. <laughs> I don't have disgusting Experience. Men's child, body fluids. My unresolved emotions and childhood stuff or whatever mm. that I haven't resolved yet. Mm. So we, we then began talking about how she felt about like men, men in particular, and there was a lot regarding sexuality mm -hmm. and sex itself. And so that brought us into a whole different uh, conversation about you know some childhood issues that have obviously occurred that Millie. Could barely remember. Well, I, I, have, I get, as you say, like I see, when I go through some emotions, I might feel like there's some sort of memory there that I'm sort of remembering, but not. There's something that I'm feeling, <coughs> but I don't know what it is. And sometimes I might get a slight vision. Um, yeah, um, and then there'll be things like uh, a man at work who I who would project at me sexually, and um, so what came into my mind as I was feeling some emotions was he reminded me of my uncle John, uh, who wasn't an uncle, but. That's what you call a friend of the family. But anyway, um, and I didn't like him, so I all I can do is trust myself that it's something to do with him. Um, and so what's happened here is a lot of fragmentation, of course, because when there's issues of sexual abuse in a child, obviously there's fragmentation. Um, but the law of attraction is demonstrating to Millie that it's still unresolved emotionally. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now she has a layer of fear on top of that. Mm -hmm. right? A layer of fear on top of that is keeping the memories 
from becoming a part of her consciousness from an emotional perspective. But she knows now that it's got to be true because the law of attraction keeps bringing yeah, it. Yeah, it keeps coming back at right, me. Right at, right at space. Stupid things like cats. <laughs> yeah. So even a cat, a cat and a dog and all those kind of, they all reflect your emotions when they're with you. Right? So if you feel like you're being bossed around by your cat, then you are. Because your cat feels like it can get away with it. And it does because of the emotion that you have within yourself of feeling like you're being bussed around and you're not releasing that. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So it's all a, res a response to your emotions, even animals around you, a response. Yeah. So we then discussed, when we were discussing that, I had emotions come up for me because I have some memories from first century experience about abuse uh, to work through as well, about sexual abuse to work through. And so I had feelings of disgust uh, come up towards women, come up with myself, which I had to work through as well. So it's interesting how the law of attraction just, you know, I was thinking about Millie. Millie's been thinking about me for a couple of days. Uh, she just rings me. We start talking about this stuff. It all just comes up naturally, and but triggers emotions for both of us. Thank you. You see, it's it's so important to love it all, isn't it? Like, isn't it so fascinating? Just how it all happens. Like, it's all just it's all just there, ready for you to experience. And your fear that is your friend leading you to this place that's home, you know. And if, if you're courageous enough to go there and you can trust what's going on inside of yourself enough to just feel the emotion, you'll get there very, very rapidly. You will. So try to not be so afraid. Try to not live in the fear. And you understand the difference between living in the fear and actually feeling it and working your way through it. <coughs> living in it means that you will do everything in your power to get away from it. You will modify your life because of fear. That that's not the answer. Because the law of attraction is bringing you these things to confront your fears to lead you to truth. So if you can start to love your fear, embrace your fear, give it a... <laughs> if you can do that, then everything will come to you naturally. Everything will just flow to you naturally. If you choose to run from your fears, your life will become more and more difficult. Mm -hmm. right. It's part of the law of attraction.